What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 44 of My Social Life. This is the podcast where you can hear the real stories behind the people on social media. I'm your host, Jacob Kelly. And before we jump into today's conversation with Kishan Mystery, there's a couple things that we need to go over first. Number one, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a rating and a review. The more ratings and reviews we get, the more it helps people find the podcast and it really helps to grow the community that we're developing here. And if you're one of those people that have recently found the podcast, welcome. I'm very excited to have you here. Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for future episodes. And to everybody listening, make sure you screenshot this, post it to your Instagram story, tag at my social pod, and I will feature you on the account and send you a message as well. Now, without further ado, let's get to my conversation with Kashan Mystery. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my social life. Today, I'm joined by Keishan Mystery. Keishan is a photographer, a designer, and you've likely seen some of his photos before as he's been reposted by some of your favorite celebrities, including Drake, and he also took some iconic shots during the Raptors playoff run, including one of Kawhi Leonard hitting the Game 7 buzzer beater in Round 2 over the 76ers, and I'm very excited to have him here on the podcast today. Keishan, welcome. Hey, how's it going, Jacob? Doing really good, man. Thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast. So I know in the intro I mentioned you took some photos of the Raptors, but Growing up, you played hockey, right? Yep. I played hockey growing up. Uh, I started a little later on in life, uh, like grade six kind of thing. Like I didn't really know how to skate before, but I started playing hockey in grade six. And then I I played hockey all the way up to today. Yeah. So I, I grew up a hockey fan, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So with the theme of this podcast kind of being revolving around social media, I have to ask about mystery hockey. Yeah. Oh, so you, you did a little deep diving. Yeah. <laughs> Did, did you know about mystery hockey before you re- reached out to me or were, were you aware? Like what, what's the story behind that? Yeah. I just searched your name up on YouTube and it ended up coming up that as well as goalies United. <laughs> yeah. So uh, mystery hockey was um, my first kind of stab at uh, I guess social media and creating digital content. Um, so I was, I was in high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do going into the university and stuff. So I thought it'd be cool to maybe video myself doing uh, like hockey reviews. And it was cool because like companies would send me free equipment and I got to review it. And I'm not the greatest, greatest hockey player, but like it, it was fun to do. And people uh, look to me for advice and stuff. And that was kind of my first start at uh, creating content and uh, developing like a social following. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I had no idea that companies were actually sending you gear and stuff to review. I thought it was just all stuff that you'd kind of purchase for yourself. Yeah. So like what happened was uh, every day after school, I would hit up like, you know, like smaller companies and be like, hey, like I I have this uh, YouTube page and I review equipment. Like, would you be able to send me like um, whether it be like a sweatband or like a stick or some some kind of uh, equipment enhancement so uh, so I can review and uh, sometimes I wouldn't get a response back. Sometimes it would be like, yeah, cool. So I guess it was a little bit like an, an, an influencer kind of uh, ordeal when I was back doing it. Yeah. That's awesome. So ultimately, why did you end up kind of slowing down and stopping that page? Um, so I did it all the way up into grade 12 and then uh, university came about and uh, I kind of, it, it kind of didn't take priority for me. Um, I kind of moved on to other things. Uh, like starting concert photography and stuff like that. And it, it didn't really become like a priority for me. Yeah. That's fair. So when did you ultimately end up kind of picking up the camera for the first time and really get into photography? Um, so like I learned how to do the video stuff just through like uh, filming those mystery hockey videos. And then uh, I actually had a friend uh, who did concert photography. And so it was like a little group of friends, like in, in my last year of high school, we used to go to, so I grew up in Brampton, right? And uh, so it's just outside of Toronto, if you're not from the GTA. Anyways, um, we would go downtown to see concerts. And uh, like, they would be like uh, small, like punk shows or metal, metal shows, hardcore, like that kind of genre of music. Anyways, he was a photographer and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And he got to go into these shows for free. Like he would provide these bands and artists with uh, photos in exchange for like a media pass or a photo pass for these shows. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Like, let me start doing that and let me learn how to do that. And then I started with a little bit of video and like 
with this group of friends, we, we set up like a, a YouTube page called Solace Music TV. We used to interview bands and I would uh, <clears throat> do all the video stuff. And then eventually I uh, transitioned into photography. Yeah. <clears throat> That's interesting. Like, so then how did you kind of progress from there to the point now where you're shooting for some, some concerts for some huge artists? It, it's just about like finding the right opportunities and uh, finding the right outlets to shoot for. Like there was a period in time where like when I wasn't shooting for under solace music TV, I was having a little difficulty trying to find like an outlet that would allow me to get into these concerts kind of thing. And so it's, it's all about like trying to get into these shows. Like even today, like I still have a little bit of difficulty getting into the bigger shows but now I work with uh, Flow 93.5, which is like a hip hop radio station here in Toronto. And uh, they're pretty good with uh, like getting access because they're pretty known in the city and like uh, outlets, like uh, like media, like through Live Nation, they know who Flow 93.5 is. So like they'll get me into the show. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all about like, uh, I guess, like knowing contacts and networking and stuff. Yeah. Do you remember that first show that you had access to? You're like, wow, I can't believe I get to go shoot like this artist. Uh, yeah. Um, so it was a band called the main. Have you heard of the main? I haven't. No. Uh, so it was at the Danforth music hall and it was my first show, like taking pictures and like just doing photos, like no video and no, no anything else. And it was pretty cool. Like I, I listened to, I was a big fan of the main, like I, I, I listened to their music kind of thing. And it was, it was just cool to like be there and capture photos and be like, there's people in the crowd. Like, and I'm like pretty close to the band right now. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So can you kind of walk me through your workflow for a concert? Cause from like my understanding, you're only given access really for the first three songs, right? Yes. So it's, it's kind of, uh, it, it's kind of, it makes you work in quick, quick timings, I guess like those first three songs, you got to make sure your settings are right, uh, right away. You got to make sure like beforehand, I, I do a little bit of research and like go on YouTube and search up like, Oh, like say, uh, Drake is performing. Like I'll use Drake as an, ex and it's, as an example and I'll YouTube is set list kind of thing and see like what the shooting conditions are like th through the first three songs and, um, kind of work from there. Like knowing like, pyro will be used if uh like they use like the air cannons and all that and just kind of uh develop an understanding of what the set list might look like before i head into there so i know what i'll be looking for and stuff like that but it, it, it kind of sucks that it's only um the first three songs because usually the best moments in concerts are near the end or in the middle when they bring out guests or stuff like that so it it's kind of frustrating when you're only given the first three songs. Yeah, I can imagine. But so you're already shooting these concerts before you went to college then, right? Cause you end up going to Ryerson. Yeah. So uh, I guess like grade 12, I was doing video kind of thing, but like in my first year of university, that's kind of where uh, it started to go down. And then uh, the summer after first year is when I first started doing photography. Yeah. Okay, and then you went to school, you went to the Ryerson School of Me Sports Media, right? Yeah, sports media. So uh, under RTA, like the radio, television arts, and then uh, I was a part of the inaugural class of the sport media program. Okay, so was your intention like to eventually do sports photography or what was your kind of plan going into school? Um, I've always loved, like, because I did all the mystery hockey stuff and like I grew up loving hockey and baseball and bit of basketball and that I just knew I wanted to do something in the sports media landscape. I thought initially it would be in the, like the marketing and business side of things, but I always did like graphic design. So that was always like my, my best uh, attribute, I guess, as a, a student. And people would always ask me like when we were working on projects and stuff to do all the graphic design stuff. And so I always had that in the back of my mind, but it was never like photography or videography. It was always like either a bit of graphic design and marketing or I don't even know. Yeah. It's like, what kind of things are you doing at school then that prepares you to work in sports? Um, it's really the environment you're in, like working with different people and networking with different people. It's like, obviously there's some technical stuff that goes behind it, but now like with like, 
the, the program I was in, it was more like broadcast heavy and TV heavy. And I knew I didn't want to go into that direction and, and like working in a control room or just working in that kind of live TV environment. Like that wasn't for me kind of thing. But like you could take different classes, like the marketing classes and the, the business classes and stuff like that and kind of learn how um, the business behind sports works. And now it's a bit changing because like, like I mentioned before, it's, it, it was broadcast focus, but now it's more digital focus. And I, I hope the program makes a transition. I'm, I'm pretty sure they are, but just more digital social media and all that kind of stuff, because that's where the industry is headed today. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned at the beginning of that, that like you got a lot of networking done. So, and it, was it through that program then that you got your internship at TSN? Um, it kind of helped like, uh, mostly the internship, uh, landed because of Twitter. Like, um, I don't know if you remember, but the, the year Edwin hit a walk off, uh, home run in the wild card game. Do you remember that? I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So that was in the, that was the second playoff run for them. and. Um, so like I said before, I, I do graphic design. So I made a quick little edit of Edwin uh, celebrated after the shot, posted it maybe like 20 minutes or half an hour after the game ended, ended up tagging uh, a bunch of outlets like Sportsnet, TSN, Bardown um, on Twitter. And then uh, I guess one, it got noticed by uh, Bardown and they retweeted it and then um the managing editor and the, the I guess the boss at Bardown uh, followed me. I was like, okay, like this, this might mean something. And he sent me a DM saying, Hey, like I may have a opportunity for you. Let me know if you're interested and like we can chat. And then that turned into an internship. And so like, I was like the first kind of social media graphic designer uh, for TSN and Bardown um, at the time. And then it kind of like opened up uh, opportunities for different people. That's crazy. So how long after he hit that walk off, did you get that graphic posted? Cause I'm assuming like the speed in which you were able to make that graphic was a big factor. Cause like if you posted it a week later, it probably would have lost some of its like traction. Yeah. So maybe like half an hour, 45 minutes after, well, like the internet was still buzzing. Um, because like in that moment, every, everyone will like retweet or share stuff that like, just like, it makes you feel like you're in the community of things. Right. So if you post something that resonates with people that, people would be like, yeah, like, I remember that. Like, that was, like, the really cool moment in sports. Like, let me retweet that, like, and share it. And so I guess someone saw it and uh, gave it some love, and then I'm here today, yeah. That's awesome. So then, so when you were at TSN, you so you, you were started as an intern, but then you ended up being a full-time employee for Bar Down. Were you just doing graphic design, or were you doing some other stuff as well while you were there? Um, mostly just graphic design. Like, obviously, we get sent, we got sent out in, into the field a lot to do some social media producing and stuff. And uh, um, aside from that, just like helping out, like obviously in the videos and the quizzes and stuff like that, and uh, like video producing, and like it's not just one role. Like you're doing a bunch of things on the fly, like uh, graphic design, uh, managing Twitter, Instagram, uh, you name it. So it's, there's not one job role. It's more of like a content producer on the social media side of things. Yeah. I was gonna say one thing with like working in sport that I've learned is like, you might have one role, but you're doing so many other things at the yeah. same time. Yeah. It, it, it's exciting because like, if I did one thing every day for the rest of my life, I wouldn't be happy about that, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so what, like, what were some of the things you learned at TSN then? Like, did school prepare you for that role or was it because it was more of a traditional broadcasting TV program at the time and not as much digital that you really learned a lot on the fly when you were at Bar Down? Um, my time there was like re really important in my career. Like I, I've met a lot of people, um, just like working in that, in that environment. Like it's, it's not like a job that uh, you expect to get out of school because it's not really a traditional job. It's like, like social media itself, like they don't really have programs like that at school now, but I can see in the next one to two years that schools will be offering like a full, like four year program just for social media content producing and all that. Like it's, it's not just social media anymore. It is like the mainstream media. So, um, in that job, I, I learned a lot about um, just using like different uh, applications like Instagram and Twitter and knowing 
uh, how to uh, like please your demographic and stuff like that. And like, you don't, you don't really learn that in school until you're like hands on with it. And like when you're submersed in, into that environment, like every day, like you, you kind of just get a hands on feel for um, that, that kind of uh, stuff that people like. And then um, it just taught me a lot. And then it, it, it helped me transitioning into my, my job now at Yahoo. Yeah. So like, and then I think you recently transitioned the last four months, right? To Yahoo. Yeah. Uh, started April 1st. Yeah. Okay. So what was the move? Like, what was that? Why was that your move to Yahoo? Like what caused that? Um, just like they off like, so at TSN, I was like a, I guess like a full-time freelancer, I guess. So I would still work Monday to Friday, nine to five kind of thing, but I wasn't like a full-time employee. So that kind of played into it. Like Yahoo, uh, my boss reached out to me, uh, Dan Toman, um, on LinkedIn. And he's like, Hey, like we're looking to expand our team. Like, I I know you're a very talented person. I would love to have a conversation with you and like, hopefully it'll, uh, result in you kind of switching over to our team. So, um, he offered me a full-time job with, uh, benefits and a different opportunity and yeah kind of thing so that that kind of helped my transition into the job for sure that's awesome and so are you doing similar things with yahoo that you were doing with bar down yep kind of the same kind of job role a little more um more more graphic design i guess like because at tsm um they have their own graphic design department you know like uh mm-hmm. like the their own creative team so at TSN, there was it was a it's a big company, right? So when you're when you're just in a small team of the social media kind of producers and writers and all that, like your graphic design only affects like the the Instagram and the Twitter aspect, but like uh, nothing on the website, nothing along those lines. But at Yahoo, it's like a very like Yahoo Sports Canada is a very small team kind of thing and then when you talk about graphic design you're kind of handling everything it's not just social media it's the website it's branding for podcasts it's uh branding for the youtube page it's all that kind of stuff yeah and then so is photography a big part of your job with yahoo uh yeah so my boss like when, when i was like interviewing for the job uh i made it clear that kind of like photography is like a big part of like what i want to like uh increase my skills on and showcase my talents and they made it very clear at the beginning that like that's why that's another reason why we wanted you on the team like we want to provide good visuals to this raptors playoff run and this short leafs playoff run at the time um hopefully next year they'll they'll make it past the first round but uh i think that was an important part and like when i was at tsn it wasn't like a priority like it was to like have the photography but it wasn't like a priority to like say like hey like this person took this photo it was just like oh tsn as a whole took this photo and i didn't really get credit that way and i noticed when i switched over um people started noticing my work i don't know if it was just the team i was working with sharing my work or i don't know but like when i was at tsn it it wasn't like a thing to like boost me up as a photographer you know Mm -hmm. and then so what you mentioned how like you did the leafs run and the raptors run so what would have happened if the Leafs had gone further? Like, would you have had to miss some Raptors games potentially because of that? Um, I think Raptors is the priority for, for the team right now. And um, that's where all of our numbers come from, especially on Instagram and stuff. Like, we're pretty, uh, we're really ha- a Raptors heavy uh, social page. So I'm not sure, like, maybe just the Leafs home games and then, uh, like I, I don't really know, but like I think Raptors was the priority, and I would be traveling with them on the road, kind of thing, to cover the Raptors. But uh, it would have been cool to see the Leafs go forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But talk to me about that Raptors playoff run. Was there like a buzz in the city before things even really started to get going? Like in that first round? Um, I think the first round, people were like, "This is a given. Like we'll we'll win the series like pretty quick in like four or five games," and then after that we'll start caring about the team because i think like after like i think this was the fifth year in the row they made the playoffs and so they're kind of just used to like okay like first round and like we got this like we don't have to invest that much time and like energy into this this first round but like okay the leafs are playing and 
they're pretty popular. So maybe we'll all care a bit more about the Leafs just for like the casual fans, I guess. But once that like second series came around and like they, I think after game seven, it, it really shifted the focus because they, they did go down to one uh, against the Sixers and everyone was like, well, this is it. Like Kyle Lowry can't do it again. And uh, Kawhi is not getting any help. And uh, it was a really rough time when they went down to one. Yeah, but it was event ultimately in that series where you took that iconic shot of Kawhi hitting the fade to win the series in game seven. Walk me through that shot. Where were you in the crowd? Like, how'd you get it? How'd you react when you saw the shot on your camera? Yeah, so um, at these games, I don't have like a specific spot on the floor to take photos. So I'm kind of roaming around the arena and uh, not staying in one spot too long just so security doesn't get mad and fans don't get mad, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I I tend to roam around the arena. And so I know that spot like that that I was in, it's a, it's a pretty good spot. Just like visually, like players usually dunk with the right hand. So if they dunk, like I'll get them facing kind of the camera and then there's like the bench behind them. So you get like bench reactions as well. So I thought like, Hey, like, this is a pretty good spot to be in. Like I'll, I'll just wait here and see if anything happens. And then like what the good thing is like in the final, like mi- three minutes of the game, everyone's standing up. So like security doesn't really care kind of thing. Cause they're like locked into the game too. And then after a while, like you see the same security every game and they know it, like you're doing your job. So like they don't care kind of thing. Anyways, standing there and in that moment I I just made sure to like up my aperture just a bit, like just so I, I, to make everything in focus and like I could live with like the ISO being a little higher. And at that moment, Kawhi going into the corner, uh, taking the shot, like just holding down the shutter as, as much as I can. And just hoping like the shot was in focus and like the fact that the ball went in and like the, the photo was timed perfectly. it, It was crazy. Yeah. So why did you pick the one that you ended up uploading? Was that obviously it was the best one, but did you get any other ones of like the ball going in or like Kawhi when he was like crouched down on the ground? Like, did you get any other shots? So in that moment, like uh, that, obviously that was my favorite, just the pose and all that. But like, I, I have a bunch of just him with a ball, like him crouching in the ball almost into the net and that kind of stuff. But in the moment, I just wanted to get one photo up because like so much is happening at that time and you have to do other things while you're working as well. And so um, I picked that one, uploaded it and uh, I guess the rest is history. Yeah. If like, if I uploaded it, maybe like a series of four for Twitter, maybe that one would get lost in the mix kind of thing. Like I, it, it's like give and take for, for how, how to choose something to, to post. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that's fair but so like we talked about earlier how like speed is important especially in big moments like that so how did you get that photo to yahoo so quickly like do you have a dongle are you able to send it to them in real time no so i had to uh, after that like after the shot went in i pretty much ran to the media room and uh put in my my card uh, and then uh uh, uploaded it right away to yahoo yeah yeah it's awesome and then it was in the, you got a similar shot in the third round where Kawhi dunked over Giannis. And that one, I think, was the one that you posted on Twitter that kind of went a little viral too, right? Yeah. Like, because, so that moment happened and I didn't get the photo up until like that, the mo- that moment happened maybe like three minutes left in the game, I think, maybe. And so the game didn't end until like a half hour later and they, they had like the, the little uh, trophy presentation after. And so in that moment, I didn't want to leave my spot to go transfer files and just upload it. And like, um, everyone was like, at that moment, everyone was like tweeting at me being like, did you get that shot? Did you get that shot? And it's like, I I replied yes. And like, everyone was excited. Like I didn't even post any photos yet in it. I'm pretty sure like the tweet got like a thousand likes. And like, there was no photo. It was just like, I got the shot. And so um, in that moment, like, because I don't have my laptop on me and like, I could edit on my phone, but I just, sometimes like, it's better just to wait and get like the, the edit I want to get in, like the quality um, 
just just so I'm happy happy with it at the end of the day. But um, yeah, like the trophy presentation happened, like waited till all that was finished, then went back to the media room. Um, everyone was excited, obviously, because they they were going to the finals, and like at that was like my only like kind of fan moment uh, throughout the whole playoffs. Like obviously, like. I had like genuine, a uh, genuine fan reaction after that dunk went in, and like I was mind boggled because I was like, you know what, like they're not losing this game, like they're gonna go to the finals after that happened, and then uh, everything after that like was like a bonus, I guess, in the finals and in Golden State and all that. So, yeah. So to go back to your question, I guess, um, go back to the media room, um, look for the shots I want to post because like. Shooting with a, a Canon 1DX, it has a high like frame rate, right? So holding the shutter down, like you can pretty much get the whole sequence and like um, throw the playoffs. I posted a few gifts and stuff um, along that matter. So like basically, you get every kind of shot in that sequence, so you're not really missing anything. So it's just about like picking the right shots to upload, I guess. Yeah. Did you have any other shots that you took that you were like, this is a banger and it didn't do as well on social as you thought it would have? Like, do you have any favorite shots that everyone else was given as much love as you anticipated? Um, I have to think about that. Let me, let me just go through my, yeah, for sure. My page. Um, honestly, like I, I liked all the photos I took and posted. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, there, there wasn't any like like I really like the after like I posted one of uh, Embiid blocking uh, Kawhi after Game Three in Philly and like obviously that won't get a lot of love because like uh, I guess most of my followers are Raptors fans right so they're not gonna like something like that but like it it kind of summed up everything that that happened to that night like Kawhi was trying his hardest but like here's Joel Embiid coming in and like ruining the day kind of thing so yeah like. I guess that that's the one that sticks out for me. Mm-hmm. And then talking about specifically the final series, did you approach the game day any differently because it was the finals or was it pretty much just business as usual, but there was just more on the line on the court? Um, for the finals, it it was, it was kind of the same, like shooting at uh Scotia bank was the same. Like obviously there was so many more people and uh, like the sec- amount of security was the same. And like, I noticed like pregame, like we we got kicked off the court like 90 minutes before tip off kind of thing. So like getting pregame shots was a little difficult and um, like media day as a whole, because like um, at working for Yahoo, we, we also have to produce content around uh, the off days and the practices. So we were at every pretty much every day um, uh, until the end of the finals, but like just for like the, like the media availabilities and getting into those scrums and stuff. So like my job outside of photography is also to capture like social video and stuff like that. Um, There's a lot of people there and it's kind of tough to do your job because just of the mass of people, but uh, shooting on game day, I, I really enjoyed shooting in Oracle. Like, um, okay. It's uh, like the security was a little, little chiller or not chiller, but like I found different spots to shoot shoot from kind of thing and um uh, as opposed to Scotiabank it's kind of difficult uh shooting kind of close to the arena or sh- shooting close to the floor but like I really enjoyed shooting at Oracle yeah that's cool um I was going to ask because you had that fan moment you said when Kawhi dunked over Giannis yeah did you have a fan moment when the hit the clock hit 0.0 and the Raptors won the NBA championship um yeah like it it was there was like 0.9 seconds left or whatever. And so like the game didn't like, oh, and, okay. and you know, yeah. like the game didn't like it, the, the ending of the game kind of like dragged out. But like at that moment, it was like, they actually did it. Like they won, but it didn't really set in until like I got back to our Airbnb. Like in that moment, it's all about like, taking like I, I'm always in go mode. Right. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to miss any moments kind of thing. And so I was, firing away kind of thing and making sure i captured all the moments and then the big thing was like where i was situated um i had to go kind of like across uh the court kind of thing from the outside because the trophy presentation was uh positioned a certain way so like 
the spot I was currently at was like behind the stage kind of thing. And so my biggest thing was like getting over um, to the other side to get a good angle of uh, the trophy presentation. And like, I missed a few of the initial shots of like uh, Kyle with the Larry O'Brien and like Kawhi with the Larry O'Brien kind of thing. Cause I was just like, there's so many people and it's like hard to get through people kind of thing, even though like you're there to do a job, but like you just, and security at that time was very tough. And so uh, the biggest thing on my mind was just getting over to that spot and taking the photos. And then after, once you go back to the media room, you're like, okay, like they, they actually won kind of thing. So it, it's kind of different when you're working in media and covering these events because you're so focused on like doing your job and it, you don't want to miss anything. And like you, you, it's like a comp, it's like a game within itself to like, capture the best moments in the videos and like upload it and see it go viral kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And then what about the parade back in Toronto? Like that must've been something else. Yeah. Like uh, there was so many people on the streets and like, you don't realize like how big the playoff run was until maybe a few years after. So like right now we're just living in the moment, but there was just so many people. And it, it like, aside from all, like all the, the bad stuff that happened, not to touch on that, but uh, just like the day as a whole, it was it was nice to see like everyone wearing Raptors gear and like people. It felt like a community of people, and like it's crazy that sports does this. Like aside aside from like this playoff run, I I, I can't see people on the street just randomly high fiving each other, you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. just because they're Toronto citizens. So it's like we we bonded over the sports team and like we we resonated with the characters on the team and kind of relate related to them and like it it was like the perfect storm of like um like a playoff run like their story is great like from Kawhi all all the way down to like Jeremy Lin like everyone has their own kind of story and it it was cool to to witness and I'm sure the rest of Toronto feels the same way so like with that in mind like how do you top this year like one from like the city like from the perspective of the city as Toronto but also from like your perspective where you got some like iconic shots from the Raptors first ever championship run like how do you top this year <laughs> I don't I honestly don't think like you can top it like it was like I said it's it, it's the perfect storm of everything like there's never been a game 7 buzzer beater like like even even that like go back uh what's it like 20 years or like when they played uh, the Sixers in 2001 and Vince Carter had the same kind of moment and he missed the shot right like fast forward to this year Kawhi makes the shot like now he's the promised one and he he actually did the whole thing and it's you can't replicate that even though even if Kawhi stays like um they're now now they're like NBA champions they're not labeled as like um chokers anymore like they they overcame that hump and now they're not labeled as losers, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you have a relationship with any of the players being around them so often, like on a game day? Um, Like when DeLon Wright was back in Toronto, like he used to uh, dap me up before the game, like when they did the, the free game huddles kind of thing. Um, but then he got traded. And so um, uh, Fred Van Fleet and Pascal, like I, I messaged on Instagram, just sending them pictures and stuff. And hopefully going to do some work with Fred over the summer with his brand and stuff. So, yeah. That's awesome. And I did want to ask the story of how you met Drake. Yeah. So, um, the, so 2018, the start of it, I guess. Um, that's like, I met like that, that happened like within the first few days of the year. And that kind of like changed, um, I, I wouldn't say like changed my career, but like it put me on the right track. Um, just like getting noticed um, and stuff. So yeah, that night, um, do you know, are you familiar with who Cabby is? Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, when I was at Bar Down, my boss was also Cabby's producer kind of thing. So he's like, yeah, like come along. Like uh, it's not like a guaranteed interview or, or whatever, because Drake does whatever Drake wants to do kind of thing. But uh, anyways, we, we show up on that night and um, um, Cabby does his interview with Drake. I'm there sending some photos of Drake and Cabby and kind of stuff. And the big thing was like after the shoot was over, I, I got a picture of Cabby and Drake together, but I I didn't get a solo shot of Drake. And I was kind of like, 
mad that that happened kind of thing. And so um, the shoot with like the interview was done. Like I put away my camera and I was about to head out. And I was like, you know what? Like, let me try it. Like just, just to go up to him and ask him like, just to take a quick photo. And, and so I brought my camera out and I took my flash out. Like the, I guess the settings were correct. Like I didn't really test them. And then um, he was in the corner. I guess the, there was like some familiar face because it, it was kind of like a media night, I guess. And then there was like a, a couple of the higher ups at TSN, like around him kind of thing in that corner. And so like, I felt comfortable just going over. And then uh, like, I, I say, Hey Drake, like uh, mind if I take a photo and then um, uh, Chubbs, like his, his best man or whatever his job title is. Uh, asked me, he's like, hey, who are you with? Kind of thing. And I was like, TSM, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, okay, one photo kind of thing. And so Drake didn't really say anything. He just uh, just posed right away and took the photo. I said, thank you. And I, I left. That's awesome. And then so I think like I said in the intro, you've been reposted by him a couple times, right? Yeah. So um, he, post, he reposted me twice in the same day kind of thing. Like after the first um, playoff game in from last year against the wizards like he wore that that humble short jersey right right yeah and so um he, he i guess like he saw it on that that word on road uh fan account kind of thing mm-hmm. the first photo so we posted that like right after the game was finished and then um on the tsn account we sent a couple photos to boy wanda kind of thing he's like oh like because we we like Abby did an interview with him earlier on in the year kind of thing. Right. So we had that kind of relationship with him where he sent, where we sent him a few photos in the past. And then, so I guess like he was like in his Uber home or Uber over to pick six kind of thing uh, with boy one day. And he's like, I got this photo of us together. And I guess he just sent it to him and he, he posted it right away. So like, I guess that defuncts the, the theory of Drake not posting his own stuff. Maybe it's a bit of both, but I think like he, he's actually on the gram and posting, posting away his own stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. So with celebrities like reposting your work, how do you feel about like crediting? Like, where do you land on that? Um, a lot of the time these celebrities will just see photos, like, like I said, reposted on fan accounts. And so they don't know the original source of what the photo is. Like, obviously it's nice to um, get the credit and, if they acknowledge that like, Hey, like, okay, like this guy took the photo, let me go back and re put the credit. But in in their mind, they just see these photos, like they're tagged, like they, after these photos are posted, like a billion like fan accounts kind of like latch onto them and tag them. And so the, it'll just pop up on their timeline kind of thing. And then they'll be like, okay, like this is a cool photo. Let me just post it. And like, not really think about giving credit kind of thing. Like, obviously it's cool. And it does, it'll do a lot for like the photographers and the videographers to get credit for the work they do. But like, you got to understand both sides of it, I guess. Right. And then, so talk to me about your social media, because I think you're at just over 15,000 followers now. And I think that's doubled just in 2019 alone. Right. Like, I think you came into the year with like 7.7. Yeah. Something around there. Cause I, I remember my goal was to hit 10,000 before the end of the year, but it didn't really happen. Um, but yeah, I, I guess like uh, someone asked me this the other day, like how, like, what are the hacks and what are like the secrets be- behind, um, growing your following? And like, the reality is like, there, there really, really isn't like any like hacks. So, like there might be, but I, I don't really use them. I, I take photos and if people like, I've kind of like, um, uh, grown a following of Raptors fans and, um, I guess they, they really like Raptors content. And so I found my kind of niche of like Raptors fans can follow me and they can um, see like the best photos of their favorite team kind of thing. And that, that, that's my biggest piece of advice. Like <clears throat> there, there is a lot of people that tackle a different uh, like different aspects of photography and like kind of mangle up their timeline. Like I'm not, I'm not the a one to say like, Oh, you got to keep, your aesthetic in a certain way and whatever. But like, if you post um, a, like a similar theme of stuff, people will gravitate towards that. And if you kind of like just post everything, like, yeah, some stuff might pop off, but some stuff might not. And so if you become like a, a hub of like one kind of 
type of content, more people will gravitate towards that. Mm. So like with that in mind, like is growing your, your Instagram something that's important to you or are you just posting the photos that you like and then people are also liking them and just following them as a result? Um, it's a bit of both. Like I, I know that uh, having a big following on Instagram will uh, just open up your eyes to other people. Like I've had like Drake's photographer, Theo, follow me and like a, a couple like bigger, like uh, I guess Instagram uh, uh not influencers, but Instagram, like, um, users follow me and just, just that helps with like a bigger following because more people will share your photos. And like, I noticed like the, the, you know, the option on Instagram where you can view like the story reshares, like that's a, that's a big, uh, it's a cool thing to see because you get to see how many people are like posting about you and like, indirectly kind of giving you a shout out kind of thing right so uh th- i think that's bigger than growing a following it's just like the amount of people sharing your work um is like the bigger analytic to to look out about yeah and then i noticed also like as a photographer though you post the occasional photo of yourself i've talked to some other photographers and they say that's just so people can connect with them as a photographer not just their work is there a specific reason to why you do that or you just like the photos um it's a bit of both like before i kind of stood away from doing that kind of stuff like i would post on my story about myself but it was just mainly photos i've taken but uh now it's more of like i want to kind of develop myself as um a person that people can look out for and like have a face behind the camera kind of thing and like maybe that'll result in more like influencer opportunities or maybe i might might start doing youtube videos or vlogs or anything along those lines so it's just to get people aware of what i look like and um just to put myself out there yeah is vlog something you're considering like do you think you might do that within the next little while um yeah like uh sort of like a vlog kind of tutorial kind of like a peter mckinnon style of things like i, I still haven't thought it all the way through but like uh because a lot of people message me about like uh just tips and advice and it's like it's pretty cool information to share with other people in like kind of like a similar um, standing in photography. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And then, so if you had to pick, what is your favorite thing to shoot? Is it concerts? Is it basketball? Is it hockey? Like what would it be? Um, <clears throat> I still, I still lean into concerts more. Like, okay. It's like basketball is obviously very cool to shoot. And um, I love basketball now. And um it's like capturing those moments kind of like those iconic moments kind of beats any photos captured at a concert kind of thing, but that's just like playoff basketball. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, concerts, I don't shoot as much anymore just because of how busy like the playoffs were and stuff, but it's kind of like, it's cool being back into that environment and seeing like your fav- favorite artist, just like two feet away from you. Like, uh, playing like a sold out crowd kind of thing and like capturing those moments is almost a little more special because like in sports like those moments are going to happen kind of thing and like you just have to be firing away but like in in music it's more like creative and like using the lighting and using like the different stage production elements and making something special you know Mm -hmm. and so by the time this podcast will come out we'll have the answer to this already but i want to get your opinion on Will Kawhi resign? <laughs> so I, I've gotten uh, a ton of messages about that. I don't have, no one has any like insider information. And like the thing is, like going into free agency or like just like even a couple of weeks ago, everyone was like confident about like the different signs of Kawhi saying like he enrolled, he enrolled his daughter into daycare. Like he was doing all this stuff around the city. Like he could have went to that Blue Jays game and not stood behind home plate, you know? Mm-hmm. right like he could have went like sat maybe a little higher up he didn't have to make it public kind of thing but like he made that a public thing and then like, he's going around in Barbados with Blue Jays jersey and like people running into Uncle Dennis saying like don't worry like it'll uh, you'll be surprised if uh, Kawhi doesn't stay and like the whole like uh, five more years one more year or whatever so I, I think he will be staying um, like doing a one plus one deal kind of thing run it back like the Raptors just like they, they kept Gasol kind of thing. And so like 
they clearly want to keep the same team. And like, I don't think they would have went with uh, Gasol's player option kind of thing if they weren't going to try to run back uh, Kawhi and maybe Danny Green kind of thing. So uh, I think he's staying. Yeah, so we'll find out within the next few days. But uh, right now, uh, Sunday, a few hours before free agency, I think uh, he's staying. Yeah. That's awesome. So for the last question, I like to flip the script on the guests. And like, what's one question that you would like to know the answer to about anything? Like if you were able, if you had like a crystal ball that could tell you any answer, what would that question be? Um, can it be like a personal thing? Absolutely, kind of thing? man. It could be anything. Um, where I'll be in like 10 years. That would be interesting. Like, I, like if you asked me a year ago, like, would you be taking all these photos and the Raptors playoff run to win a championship, I would say not a chance. Right. And so like this, this year, like this past, like three, four months alone has like (laughs) increased everything on on my end, whether it be like social media and like just awareness. And then uh, next week I'm doing a a creator class talk with uh, Charlie Lindsay as well. And so uh, I can't even imagine 10 years from now what it'll look like. So uh, that's my question what what will my career be looking like 10 years from now that's awesome but i just want to give you the floor man where can the people find you plug everything and anything that you got right now yeah so uh twitter instagram it's underscore kashan mystery uh, k-i-s-h-a-n m-i-s-c-r-y with an underscore in front of it um no youtube yet like you could check out mystery hockey there, there there's still the videos on there i haven't unlisted any of them so if you want to know my my hockey roots or if you're a hockey fan that also likes basketball um check that out there the reviews are pretty outdated now but um that that's something like i would look back into doing now that you brought it up again just like not necessarily just hockey reviews but maybe photography reviews or something along those lines like it was, it was fun doing those videos so i uh, thank you for bringing that up yeah My pleasure, man. I thank you for taking the time to be on this podcast. Thanks, man. I just want to thank everybody for listening to this episode, whether you've listened the entire way through or you've only listened to bits and pieces. I really appreciate you taking the time to check this out. Guys, go follow Keishan on Instagram, Twitter. I'll make sure everything's linked in the show notes down below. And if you'd like to follow me, come say hi. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and at the Jacob Kelly. And if you'd like to follow the podcast, you can find it on Instagram and at my social pod and by searching up my social life on YouTube. Thank you once again for listening to this, everybody. We'll talk soon.